Meanwhile inside the Players Association cafeteria, Sung Hoon was eating his meal when his phone started the ring. It was a call from ranker Kim Giju, and upon picking it up he joked that the handsome secretary Hyo Sung Hoon was speaking. Giju on the other side asked if it was illegal for a player to run through the streets without authorization, and Sung Hoon while puzzled answered that it was correct since it's dangerous to do so. He then asked Giju why was he asking something so obvious like this, and Giju replied that he had someplace he needed to get to quickly, so could he be exempted with his mercenary privileges. Sung Hoon replied of course, as long as he was informed first. But before he could get any more answers from Giju, the call was already disconnected. However at this time, Giju used his powers to quickly travel the city at the fastest speed possible to arrive at the blacksmith shop of the elder. Fully going into battle mode, he took the stairs headed down towards the shop, but he didn't feel any other presence other than the misters. He started to wonder if a suspicious person trespassed or something, but even if his detection ability was unable to find anything, his ego still warned him to be careful and approach with caution. As he approached the door, he closed his eyes and used his senses to detect but finding nothing, he started to open the door and enter the store calling for the elder but found the shop in ruin and the mister sitting in front of the counter beaten up, he quickly ran to the elder shouting his name. While asking about his condition, he noticed that the elder's hands were both completely crushed. He also noticed that the equipment is all gone, just who in the world could have done this? At that moment the beaten up elder started to regain his consciousness, and Giju tried to get a healing potion to him and told him that they need to get to a hospital, but the elder said forget it. Since he can tell more or less that his life is at its end, and L told him that the elder's vitality has been depleted, and Lu said at this point a potion won't do anything at this point. Giju couldn't believe the situation, but the elder told him there isn't much time so could he listen to his story. It's the request that he spoke to him about last time, about one day when he needed his help, he would help him just one time. The elder said he was one of the pioneers, they are the people who became players on the same day that the tower first appeared. In the beginning, the tower was a completely unknown area, they knew nothing to the point that even hunting goblins was difficult. A lot of them died, but his comrades fought with the resolve to save humanity. Back in the day he had no desire to climb the tower and get stronger, but he was a tank at the time which was unrelated to blacksmithing. He walked the path of a forger before he became a player, and so he was able to make equipment to a certain level with his abilities as a player and with his blacksmithing skills. Of course, he couldn't make special equipment like he does now, that ability came later due to a certain event. Giju asked what sort of event, the elder replied that it was when he was on the verge of the 50th floor. He had re-entered the tower for the second advancement, and during this time he was searching for a clue on how to advance his forging skills since he had hit a wall. At that time, a question came to mind, about why they must only climb the tower. Giju listened speechless, as the elder continued to ponder that does the tower only stretch upwards, what's in the tower's basement? Is the first floor of the tower truly the tower's first floor, and questions like that filled his mind at that time. He spent years trying to find the tower's basement, he first searched all over the first floor, going to places he had already been to as well as places that no one had ever gone to before. There's probably no one who knows the first floor better than he did, and then he finally discovered it. The door leading to the basement, and where he ended up after passing through that door was a completely different world. At this time, Giju received a system notification telling him he had obtained information that he wasn't qualified to know, and a penalty will be given. He was in a world of pain, and his vision started the blur from it and he screamed, and even the dying elder was concerned asking if he was alright. His egos were concerned as well, and Lu shouted at him to get a hold of himself. He started to recall all those people who told him he didn't have the qualifications to hear, and all the talks of needing to pass the test on the 50th floor, and once he gained the new qualifications after passing the 50th floor, they can tell him more of the story. So the penalty for knowledge before the qualification from the 50th floor of the tower was something like this. The elder asked if he was alright, and Giju replied for him to please keep going. For Giju it felt like someone was tearing his brain apart, but he knew he would never get a chance like this again, and he needed to listen to this. The elder told him not to push himself too hard and continued the story. The tower's basement wasn't as fantastic a place as he's expected. It was a place of blazing earth and desolate desert, and it definitely wasn't a good place to live. 
At this moment Lu had a reaction, and Giju asked what is it, and Lu replied that places probably, but stopped and told him just to listen for now. The elder continued to tell the story that he wandered around to investigate the place for a long time, but he couldn't find anything special, it was like he'd entered an endless gate. So after some time, he tried to return the way he came, however at that moment he ran into a monster. The monster was much stronger than any of the monsters he'd faced in the tower before, and even for him who was considered one of the strongest of the pioneers, was made a helpless fool. Just as he felt he was about to die, a red-haired girl appeared. Giju asked a girl, and the elder replied his wife, it was quite an intense first meeting. Giju asked if his wife was also a player, but the elder told him no, but before he could continue, he collapsed to the floor. Giju rushed over concerned, but the elder told him to take what's in his pocket. In it, he found a folded paper and a little golden hammer. Getting himself up from the ground, the elder told him that it's a rough map of the tower's first floor and the location of the trapdoor that leads to the basement. If you go there, Minsu will and couldn't continue due to a coughing fit that came over him. At this moment, Brunhardt asked Giju, couldn't he make a person into an ego, then can't you bring the elder back to life? This suggestion shocked and surprised Giju, while El told him that it might be dangerous. El continued to say that even if the egoification was to succeed, it might not completely bring him back to life. Lu on the other hand thought the idea wasn't bad, considering he is about to die anyways, so would it hurt to try? After a moment's thought, Giju tells the elder that he has something to say that though there's not enough time to give him the details, he may have a way to save him. But to do so, he would have to kill him first, and the probability is 0.1% or even lower that it might work. So if he was fine with that, but the elder cuts him off saying then it's not even worth thinking about, if there is any chance at all, he would rather be that one to request it from him instead. The elder told him that he wouldn't have called him if he didn't trust him. After the initial shock, Giju smiled and told the elder to please endure it even if it hurts. As Giju stabbed him with the black sword. The elder told him thank you, and please save Minsu, since he will be a blacksmith who will surpass him. After Cannibalish was activated, the pop-up window showed that the egoification has failed, only a fragment of Huang Jichels had been absorbed. Lu tried to cheer him up that it wasn't a complete failure, and El said they will definitely be able to find a way, even Brunhardt told him it'll be okay. Giju guessed it's better than nothing happening, and asked Lu if he know anything about what they just heard, since from his earlier reaction it seems like Lu knew something about all this. Lu before continuing warned that Giju might receive a penalty, just like the pain from hearing information like before. Lu confirmed that it's obvious, since he wasn't sure if it's because of his demonic eye or mentality, but it wouldn't have been strange to him if he died. Giju asked if it was that bad, and Lu confirmed saying either the elder probably didn't think that far ahead, or thought the story was important enough to take that risk. Well, he'll try to give Giju enough information within the lines of safety. And as the elder said, there exists another world. Not only that, so many that you couldn't even count, but had to stop since Giju was coming down with another fit of pain, and simply finished by saying he'll tell him more another time. Lu warned not to rush and gain the qualifications first. Meanwhile somewhere on the tower's first floor of the tower, a man with a monster mask in a white robe was shouting to a group of follows. Telling them that the door will open once the ceremony is complete, and the gods who will punish this world will arrive. The apostle will become the king of the gods. As he turned to a man standing off to the side, he asked if something was not to his liking. And in front of the man is a boy Minsu, who is lying asleep inside a slightly open stone coffin. The man in purple said that they truly knew nothing about what will happen when the passage's barrier is undone. When the masked figure was confused, the man in purple said it was nothing and told them to begin the ceremony as he sealed the coffin closed. Just then someone charged into their location and caused a blast among the follows sitting down, making a huge ruckus. As the man turned to look behind him, the cloud of dust started to settle and reveal the figure of a man. It was Giju, who shouted with anger where's Minsu? A few minutes before, Giju had looked at the rough map of the tower's first floor, which indicated the door that lead to the basement. He was running across the tops of buildings headed to the tower, and telling Lu that he knew where the location marked on that old man's map was. Since there was no way he would forget, since it's the place he went to every day before he met El and Lu. 
The place he visited once he finished with his guide work, which is a remote place that players didn't come to on the first floor, a secret space only for him, the place where only one goblin appears a day. As he approached the location, he found a barrier that restricted entry and also a perception blocking barrier that was also applied on top of it. A barrier like this won't be easy to break and it usually required a key to open it. Upon thinking about a key, could it be that the other item the elder gave him was the key? He used the small hammer and touched it to the barrier, and to his surprise it created an opening. The person in the purple robe was talking to the masked person and was about to start the ceremony when a blue and red streak came down from the sky to strike among them. An angry Giju was asking them where's Minsu, and as he scanned the area he could see a coffin in front of him, and he could feel Minsu's energy coming from within. Luckily, he was able to gather information from the guard he questioned on the way. First, they were all part of the Carven Guild, and their objective is to offer Minsu, who possesses the same blood as the gatekeeper, as a sacrifice and open the door connecting to another world. Giju felt like he heard of the Carven Guild before, but most of those here were mid-rankers with a few rankers, but the most dangerous was the man in purple. Lu cautioned him to be careful since the power he feels from him is almost on par with Giju. Upon hearing this, he called on Rain's wolf form to take part in the battle, at the same time opened his gate to bring his undead minions onto the battlefield as well. The man in the mask screamed impossible, how can a human possess the territory of the gods, could this mean that he's also a god's apostle? Unable to accept reality, he shouted with maddening eyes that this must be a trick of some sort. The masked man raised his weapon and charged a Giju, shouting do not disrupt the ceremony. Giju was easily able to dodge the attach which infuriated the masked man, who called Giju an insolent bastard, how dare he impersonate a god's apostle. Giju effortlessly dodged all the attacks. And in one move, killed the masked man with a single strike. The man with his dying breathes questioned why a god's apostle was disrupting their ceremony to Lord Andrus. At the moment of Andrus, Lu commented, could that bastard have, and Giju quickly asked Lu if he knew who Andrus was. Giju could sense an overwhelming rage coming from Lu. However, Lu told him they can talk later, but for now to focus on the opponent in front of him for now. He agreed and looked at the purple-robed figure in front of him, neither of them moved and just stared at each other. Giju was thinking that if the other party was not going to attack, should he make the first move, but L told him she doesn't feel a hint of killing intent. Then Giju asked, what are your objective, are you not their comrade, and why are you just standing still? After a moment of silence the maid in purple said that he didn't want to see it either, his son being used in this way. This completely mystified Giju, then confronting the man said then are you Minsu's father? And also Mr. Huang Jichil's son, but the other party just laughed and replied you're taking a census in a situation like this, and called him a hectic guy. In any case, since Giju entered his barrier, his father must have sent him. Then confessed that he was the one to harm his father, and kidnapped his son. But he didn't join hands with them and did all this because he wanted to, and if he said it was unavoidable, then it would just sound like an excuse. However at this moment, Lu commented that the other person looks way too old, since it's only been 23 years since the tower appeared. Then Giju replied out loud that now you mention it, the years didn't match up. Since Mr. Huang said he met his wife when he was a player. And since the tower only appeared 23 years ago, shouldn't the person in front of him be around his age? But considering Minsu's age and this man's appearance, then the other person replied so that's what he meant, and said, are you aware of the existence of other worlds, the flow of time there is different from Earth. Then Giju recalled Su Jung's comment about them being the same in Earth age. The guy in purple continued to explain that different from his father and Minsu who were born on earth, he was born and raised in another world. And the fact that he belongs to another world gives his existence a large penalty, so he pondered for a long time. Whether to return or not, and what he should do once he returned. However at this time, a crack appeared on this man's face, and Giju noticed it. The man used his hands to cover his face, and continued to speak saying that his father blocked him from belonging to his world, and completely severed his relationship with him. Giju concluded that the elder estranged himself with his son for some reason, after sealing the door leading to another world, and Lu agreed saying that's more or less seems to be the case. The man continued saying although he was in pain, he endured it for his son's sake. But Andres told him to live only for his sake, 
and that he can become the king of that place. Giju commented, was Anandris the name he just heard, and the man replied that he's the head of the guys that his soldiers are fighting, but suddenly the man froze in the middle of his speech. Giju started to wonder why this man was acting like this, and Lu informed him it was a mental attack, Andras' specialty. And it appears he must have a certain amount of resistance to it, but that in itself became a poison. The man shuddered to himself, he will become a king, and Lu explains further that a lasting incomplete brainwashing created a completely new consciousness. As flames started to come out of cracks on the man's face, he started to utter words, becoming a king, father, Minsu, sacrifice. The flames rose high into the sky and the followers shouted that the apostle is descending, telling everyone to get away or they'll all die if they stay there. While the lich told his soldiers don't let a single one of them get away. What appeared before Giju was a towering flaming monster with horns coming out of his forehead. While jumping up to attack, Giju couldn't help notice the incredible heat coming from the monster and called Rain to aid him. However, thinking he was too late he blocked the attacking fist of the monster, only to crash on the ground in a flaming explosion. As the flames cleared, Giju was unharmed thanks to the elemental water protection provided by Rain in the nick of time. But L warned that its firepower was too strong, and Lu warned him that he can't last because his skill proficiency was too low. As the flame monster continued to attack with its fists, Giju only had time to dodge out of the way but knew that he couldn't keep using the elemental skills directly like this, since it was putting too much strain on his body. As he stood in front of the coffin pondering on what to do next, the monster conjured a giant fireball in the air and throws it at our hero. Being surprised by this sudden change in its attack, Giju barely dodged out of the way. But to his dismay the fireball actually struck the coffin instead, which had Minsu inside of it. As Giju was horrified at what just happened, he shouted Minsu's name, but Lu told him to calm down, since Minsu was fine. He felt it as they entered this place, but Minsu's coffin was protected by a barrier. Giju was relived and told Lu to tell him something like that sooner, but Lu rhetorically replied that he didn't ask. As Giju turned to face the monster, he commented that now all that's left is to face that thing without a care. Lu asked if he had a way, and Giju replied with confidence of course, if elemental water won't work. He called on elemental fire, and was soon covered in burning red flames. As the heat started to rise, Giju said let's see if it can burn. Subscribe to the channel for the next part. Thank you for watching, until next time.